All right, great. So like I said, we're going to start our practice today with some breath work in order to help us cultivate um, some vitality. All right, so if any of you have read the book Breath, I recommend it if you haven't. But one of the simplest things that we can take away um, knowing about our breath is that breathing through our nose is really important. It's one of the most important things we can do. And we, it's easy to forget as we go about our day and, and are focused on our breath, it's easy to forget how important it is to maintain nasal breathing. So let's close your mouth, okay? And just have a moment to drop your awareness and your attention into your body. Now, of course, if you're congested and it's difficult to breathe through your nose, then by all means, breathe through your mouth. This is why we have um, secondary pathways for oxygenating ourselves. All right, so just pause for a moment here and just feel into the sense of what's happening now. Ground yourself. Don't worry, we're going to move a little bit before we start the breath, just so that we're a little bit uh, free and embodied. But let's just start by noticing. Pay attention. It's very hard to pay attention to a natural breath. The minute we <clears throat> start to pay attention to our breathing, we usually start to shift. You've noticed a couple of breaths. You can probably sense, you know, where your energy is at. Do you need more, um, you know, a higher energy? Do you need to move and have a lot of um, mobility to help you? Do you need more stillness? What does your practice need today? Let's place our hands together at our heart and center ourselves for our practice. Be prepared to receive the gifts that asana and pranayama can give us. Offer an intention, <clears throat> what do you need? Release the hands. Let's put our hands on our knees and we're going to do just a little seated cat cow here. So round the spine, tuck the chin a bit and then open up the heart, <coughs> lift the chin toward the sky and just back and forth a little bit, just feeling some mobility in your spine. Notice where the breath wants to go. You know, what's your natural tendency of where you want to inhale in the movement? and where you want to exhale in the movement. All right, and then come to a neutral spine. Lift the left ear up, drop the left shoulder down, and just feel a little stretch in your shoulder here. Okay, and let's open up the hand out to the side, stretch your fingers, palm facing up toward the sky, and then pull your fingers down a little bit. And then as you're ready, reach up and over to the side. You can put your other hand on the ground or a block or something to support you. And then come back up. Before we do the second side, shrug your shoulders a few times. Let's have some big mobility in the shoulder blades. And then we're going to go backwards through this. So reaching up through the side, stretching through the side body a little bit. And then when you're ready, reach that arm out to the side, palm facing up, lift the ear away from the shoulder. Maybe bring your fingertips down toward the ground, spread your palm wide. And then relax your arm, keep your head where it's at, just stretching the side of your neck. Notice your breath, let it travel through your neck. And then back to center a couple of times. This time, you don't feel like you have to just stick with one direction of shoulder shrugs. Maybe you want to kind of roll them forward a couple times and then roll them backward. 
and then interlace your fingers. Press your palms straight up in the air. Find the breath, open the chest, feel a little bit of back bend that lives in this posture. And then both hands stretching out to the side, open heart. Okay, lift your fingers up toward the sky. And then relax your hands and give them a good shake. All right, left arm lifting up to the sky this way. Bring your hand to the outside of the knee and twist. Now notice, you know, everything we're doing just to kind of warm up a little bit is something you can do sitting at your chair at work or on an airplane or wherever you are that you're sitting for a while. Change sides, reach that arm back up and place your hand to the outside of the knee. Twisting to the side, drop the shoulders, open the breath. And then come back to center. One big stretch open. And then round the spine one more time, hands on knees. And then back to an open heart and then pause here. Now notice we haven't done anything to warm up our legs, but see if <clears throat> what it feels like if you have a little bit more openness, awareness, stability in the upper body. All right, so let's just start with a few deep breaths, just feeling the breath, find a longer pace. Notice the sinuses, see if you can feel the chambers where your breath is traveling. A full exhale. All right, so we're going to do two different types of pranayama here. We're going to start out with some alternate nostril breathing, Nadi Shoshana. So right hand, thumb on the top of your nostrils, not right at your nostril tip, but kind of where your nostril begins. Ring finger on your left. Now notice the alignment of your spine and your head before you get going. So we're not tipping or pulling or leaning. <clears throat> Gently close off the right nostril. Begin to breathe in through the left. And then when you're ready, close off the left nostril and we're breathing out through the right. So the, pay, the rhythm um, of alternate nostril breathing is you breathe out and then breathe in through the same side and then switch sides. And we're not trying to press really hard on our nose, but we're trying to close off the nostrils so that we can have one-sided breathing. Pay attention to the feeling in your skull, to the feeling in your sinuses, See if you can maintain the slowness of your breathing, both on the inhale <clears throat> and the exhale. Try to relax your right arm, your shoulder, your face, your eyes. Keep a good posture through your spine. If you notice yourself starting to slump, pay attention. See if you can keep the collarbones Lifting and broad, just an ever so slight bow of your chin. You don't have to pull your chin way down towards your chest, but enough to just create a little bit of that Jalandara Bandha, the, the throat bind. Keep renewing the relaxation through your face. Try to imagine that your sinuses and your skull are just this giant open chambers of space for your breath to move. Try not to rush. And one of the <clears throat> beautiful things about alternate nostril breathing is the sense of balancing the hemispheres of the brain. So notice when the inhale is coming through one side, can you feel the lighting up in your skull? And when you switch, can you feel something change? Switch sides, can you feel something change?
are ready to finish, complete your cycle until you're exhaling outside of your left. And once that is done, breathe through both sides of your nose for a moment and just enjoy the feeling of what you have right now. Something so simple as just a few minutes of doing um, some pranayama can have profound impact on the nervous system, the balancing of the brain, the oxygenation of the body. Okay, we're gonna wait and do the second pranayama a little bit later in our practice. Let's ride the wave of this alternate nostril breathing and let's find our way onto our back. So especially if you are congested and this is challenging to you to have, you know, breathing through your nose. And you can try things like a neti pot <clears throat> or um, just do the best you can. You know, not every day is an easy breathing day. All right, so let's go ahead and stretch our body out. Feel into the reach of your spine, right side, left side, whatever feels nice. <clears throat> and let's bring our knees into our chest and rock a little bit, swaying from side to side. And just check in, how's your body? And circle the knees, go a few directions one way, a few directions, there are a few um, rolls the other direction. And taking stock of your back body for a moment, feeling into your sacrum, your back, the back of your spine. And then let's open up the hips away from the midline and bring them back in. Pay attention to the range of motion that's available here today. And then pause out there. So bring your knees apart wherever you land. That's kind of a, a nestling, comfortable place in your hip joint where you feel open, but there's not um, any strain on the hip joints. So just hang out here for a moment. Frog your feet, so flex your feet. Find your breath, and then bring your knees back to center. Reach your legs straight up in the air, hold behind your legs, and let's flex and point the toes here for a moment. So just feel into you know, the movement of your feet, you can take your feet a little further apart from each other and do some ankle rolls. Okay, rolling through your feet and just feel them wake up a little bit. All right, and then right knee comes into your chest, left leg long on the floor. Enjoy the squeeze in the hip joint. And then switch sides, left knee coming in, right leg long. Feel that squeeze. One more time each side, right knee coming in. A good compression. Left knee coming in, a nice, good compression. Okay, both legs coming back up in the air. Flex and point your toes one more time. All right, and then we're gonna open our legs like a V. You can still be holding the backs of your legs, you know, maybe wrapping around behind the knees or the hamstrings. Flex your feet a bit, open up the inner thighs. We're going to bring our legs back, arms away from the legs now, arms overhead. Feel your core start to kick into gear here. We're going to open the legs out again. Find your breath. Start to turn on some of your core strength. Bring your legs back in. And then relax your knees, happy baby pose. Grab onto your feet and rock a little bit, swaying from side to side. Starfish your body out. Big breath in, expand, wiggle your fingers and your toes, and then exhale and draw your knees in and your head comes up. And let's roll over onto our side and come up onto our hands and our knees. All right, so move your spine about. Move around through your hips, move around through your spine. It can be cat cows, but it can also feel and look like anything at all. There's no rules on how you want to begin your warm-ups here. 
All right, now to get a little space in the rib cage, let's see what it feels like to move the rib cage around. So imagine that you're in a cylinder with your torso. We're gonna push our ribs over to the right and then drop them down and then over to the left and then lift them up. Okay, so you're just kind of doing a big giant circle with your rib cage. Find your breath through this process and then change directions when you're ready. Roll through the rib cage in the other way. So over to the right, up toward the sky, over to the left, and down. All right, settle back towards child's pose. Walk the hands out in front of you, inch, inch, inch. So see if you can kind of like lean into the right and then lean into the left and just allow your body to kind of snake forward with your hands. Once you get to as, um, a length, as as far out as you can get, drop some weight. Drop some weight into the hips. Drop some weight into the head. Feel your shoulders open. Big breaths. All right, come back up on tall fours. Put your elbows on the ground, palms facing up toward the sky, and go ahead and drop the shoulders down toward the ground. So at the risk of falling through your shoulder joints, let's not collapse. See if you can have a little tiny loft, like a, a little um, hot air balloon is underneath your armpits, kind of trying to coax the armpits up. And at the same time, you're dropping your spine down. Thumbs can move toward the back, wherever they go. And then reach your arms out and come up on tall fours. Move your spine about. Lift the left arm, reaching it high in the sky. Exhale and slide that shoulder under, coming into a twist on this side. Let the neck soften and relax. So notice the back of the body opening in a unique way. Return to the feeling of your breathing. And then square the hips toward the floor, square the shoulders toward the floor, drop back toward the hips and open up the back of the shoulders. So stretching. Um, your arm is still underneath you, but your chest is broad. And then inhale, reach that arm all the way back up again. Hand down onto the ground, second side, arm up. Big breath. Exhale, slide that shoulder underneath. Breathing deeply, breathing fully. And then come out of that a little bit, shoulders and chest facing the ground. Keep your arm underneath you a little bit so that you have the capacity to stretch the outside of your shoulder. Full breaths. And now reach that arm back up, reaching to the sky, hand down onto the ground. Find your way to dog pose. Extend through the side bodies. Feel the heart lift toward the pelvis. Feel free to move around in your hands and feet. Just get to know your body in this posture. You can pedal your feet and bend knees. Just check in with how you are today. Once you get settled in the body, return to the breath. Can you feel yourself breathing through the nose? Can you feel your lungs expanding out to the sides? And then walk forward and come into Uttanasana, relax the base of the skull. Inhale for a halfway lift. The spine is getting longer, the feet spread out. Exhale and melt and fold. Rise all the way up to stand. Bring your arms to the sky when you're ready. So, you know, if you struggle with some blood pressure equilibrium, always just take a little time to get yourself situated when you're back upright. Reaching the heart to the sky. Open that chest, see what it feels like. Spread your wings, palms coming forward, elbows bent, and then press your arms straight out to the sides. Let's do some circles with the hands here. Try not to jack up your neck. Okay, so just trying to feel into some nerve glides in your hands. All right, so press the palms away, lift your ear, and lift the other ear. And then release the hands down. Sometimes a lot of these accessory muscles in our neck 
can get very tight with um, poor breathing patterns. So let's just open things up a little bit. We're gonna reach back behind us, grab the uh, right wrist with the left hand, find a little bit of tug, but not enough where you're pulling your shoulder down. Lift your right ear up toward the sky, and then experiment. You can drop your chin a little bit. You can lift your chin a little bit. Just find some pathways of stretching open. Bring your breath into your neck. And then come back to center. Arms coming up. Open your chest, lean back for a back bend, and then release your hands back. Okay, second side. Reach your left arm behind you. Grab on with your right hand. Lift your neck or your ear rather. Lift your chin a little bit and just find that side stretch through your scalenes and then start to move any way you want. You can move through your chin up and down, a little bit of back and forth. Just kind of find the pathways that feel really good to open up your neck and make sure you're feeling the breath travel through here. Relax one more time, arms coming up, and then release. Okay, take your fingers all along the <clears throat> pathways, right on the sides of your trachea, and very lightly, this is not an intense thing, just kind of drag your fingers down your neck. You can even go right over your trachea very lightly, but just feel into the lymph movement as well as all the muscles that tend to get trapped up when we breathe. So you can go downward from your jaw down toward your collarbones. And you don't have to stay in one spot. You can move it outward to the sides. Just get to know your neck a little bit. All right, and then we're gonna do some tapping. So have your finger pads, not your fingertips, tap along your collarbones. Remember, this is a primary spot where your lymph from everywhere in your body kind of rejoins the cardiovascular system. So let's just give a little stimulation, a little wake up. And then we're gonna turn that, in, <coughs> turn that into a chest um, tapping. Okay, so you can take fists or scoops with your open hands, however feels good. And just get into the kidneys and the back of your body, get into the side ribs. Okay, a little just a little bit of vibration, tapping, <coughs> cupping. All right, and then let that go. Shake out your hands. And just enjoy all this fresh new energy moving into your lungs, moving through your lymph. Okay, deep breath in, open up through your heart, and then a big fold forward. Relax your head, soften. Inhale for a halfway lift. How's your breath? Stay with it. Exhale and fold forward. Step your left foot back. Come into a lunge. Right foot forward. Now we get into our legs a little bit more. Let's enjoy. So opening the, the hamstrings and the hip flexors. Bending and straightening the front knee. Enjoy the feeling of waking your body up. Grounding yourself. Breathing deeply and fully through your nose. Remember, we're, we're breathing through the nose at that. Uh, every opportunity we can. All right, ground yourself, rise up, bring the arms anywhere that serves the breath. Melt the shoulders, so all that ease that we found in our neck. Let's try not to ruin it by jacking our shoulders up toward our ears. When you're ready, twist over to the side. You can put your hands on your knee, on your hips if you want, whatever feels good. Finding the breath. Reaching the arms all the way back. Exhale, hands down, back to dog pose. Enjoy the fullness of your posture. Breathe deeply. Fill up those lungs all the way under your armpits, the side bodies. See what it feels like to feel the back body inflate. And then come forward into a plank. Hold yourself steady. Start noticing where the breath wants to go when you have sturdiness through your center body. When our transverse abdominus has to kick into gear, our diaphragm can't move as easily down. So we start to feel the breath travel to the sides. Enjoy this. Enjoy the movement of your rib cage out to the sides. Okay. 
Full deep breaths through your nose. Lower yourself down whenever you're ready to do so. Roll the shoulders a few times. Just enjoy the feeling of your neck having space. Inhale, cobra pose. Exhale, and mount. Twice more, rising up. Feel the beauty of the back bend, the big open chest. All your breath out, wait for the breath. Let the breath take you into the pose, then let the breath take you out of the pose. Come up on tall fours, move that spine around. You can be in the cylinder again if you want with your ribs, you can swag your tail, cat cows, anything that's nice. When you're ready, dog pose, or just bring your left foot forward. However, if you like to skip a few dog poses here and there, we're gonna find our way into a lunge with the left side forward. Okay, let's start to move. Find your breath. Feel that you're moving rhythmically with your breathing. The slow and steady pace. There's no rush. We don't have to rush our body or our breathing. Let your brain slow down enough to follow the pace of your breath. Be patient with your exhales, let them have their time. When you're ready, you can feel your grounding in your lunge, then rise up as your body prepares for this kind of movement. You want to feel that sense of steadiness, so ground yourself and then rise up. Try not to jack, jack up your neck. We've just done some beautiful neck opening. Let's keep it, breathing deeply. Twisting to the side when you're ready. So notice the twists and what they offer the breath. Shoulders down away from the ears. Okay, and inhale, arms coming back up. Hands down onto the blocks or floor or legs. Walk your back foot forward and fold. Relax your neck, wobble it around. Let it be easy. Halfway lift, hamstrings get a full stretch, the bottom of your feet get a full stretch. Exhale, and melt, let your knees soften and bend. Okay, bring your legs to the side of your mat, so open up wide. Finding breath, come into a wide low squat, for, or a high squat, but lower your torso. So our hips are in line with our knees, open up the inner thighs, and just drop your weight into one foot, into the other foot, breathing well. And then come on up all the way to a stand and a standing start. Reach your one arm up, open up through the side of the body. Big breath through your ribs, back to center, open up to the other side. Keep the neck as soft as you can. And relax. We're gonna move from side to side. So you all have done this before. Just find any pathway with your arms that feels good. I want you to find some lowness, some center of gravity dropping down, some weight shifting from one side to the other. Notice when you have this deep work of the legs and the grounding of the lower body, that there's some, there's some support here that's available to us. Breathing, moving in any way you want. And you find your way to a balanced place. Open the chest. And then stand up straight and tall. Turn your feet over to the right. Parzo Konasana. Elbow on your knee. Stretch your arm open. So enjoy all the space in the side of your body. Try not to let this hip push way forward. Keep the back leg. The femur bone is drawing back in the hip joint. Open up both sides of your breath. Both sides of your ribs. Feel that your breath is not traveling just into the base of the skull or your neck, but really the movement is lower. Your diaphragm controls the breath. Nasal breathing as much as you can. Round the feet. Good. 
Come on up. How are we gonna just do some ping ponging left and right? Come into Parsvokanasana on this side. Bend your elbow, place it on your knee, or put your hand on a block. Arm overhead if your shoulder likes that. If not, you can have your hand straight out from your shoulder or on your hip. Our focus today is on the breath. So it won't always, it's on the breath, but see if you can really pay attention. Serve the breath. Do everything you can, just maintain nasal breathing to feel that both sides of your rib cage are available for breath. That the neck is taking a back seat. It's not the prime mover of your breath. Ground through both feet. All right, come back up. Standing star, open your breath up. Turn your feet to the right one more time. Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. Relax the shoulders, gaze out over your fingers. Feel that your legs are supporting you and grounding you so that there's all this space in your upper body. Try not to hug your shoulders up toward the ears, let them drop down. So the expansion can find its way into your rib cage without everything lifting. You know, you wanna have the spine elongating, but you don't wanna feel that your rib cage and your shoulders are up at your shoulders. See if you can keep things soft and spacious, moving outward and downward. Reverse the warrior, stretch through the side, straighten up that leg and find triangle pose. Hand can come on your leg somewhere or on the block. Take advantage of the big open space to breathe. Grounding through your feet, rooting through your legs. Shoulders are still moving away from the ears. So we're not hiking up toward our ears with our shoulders. Back up. We're gonna turn our feet over to the second side. <clears throat> Coming into Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. All right, so bending your knee, arms. Now, if you feel that your shoulders creep up and you really can't help it. You know, you're like, oh, I just can't relax. Put your hands on your hips or even put your hands over your heart or on your belly, somewhere where the shoulders get a cue that they do not have to do so much work. Sometimes flipping your palms open to the sky instead of your hands down can make a difference. So whatever you're doing, try to ease off the tension across your neck. Let the breath travel into the rib cage the diaphragm, everything's expanding out and down, not just up. Mindful of those muscles in your neck that like to do breath work unnecessarily. When you're ready, you can reverse that warrior and stretch your arm. Find your way into triangle pose, straighten that front leg. Hand can be on a block or the, or the leg somewhere, be light. Shoulders away from the ears. Maybe your arm is up in the air, maybe your hand is on your hip or your arm at your side. So find the pathway that keeps your shoulder blades softly moving down. Remember to breathe through your nose. Check in with your legs and make sure your knee, your front knee is not locked out. You want a tiny little micro bend in there so you can root and yield with your feet. All right, and come back up. Turn your feet wide, toes facing forward, hands can come down on blocks or block or floor, whatever feels nice. So when your legs are wide, your pelvic floor has room. When your pelvic floor has room, your diaphragm has room. So feel into the rhythm of your breathing here. Feel the side ribs expand. The neck is easy and soft.
And then we're going to swing back to the front of our mat for another dog pose. Take your time getting there. Adjust your legs. Feel free to move around in the pose like we do in the beginning sometimes. Just find your way. And hug your hands toward each other. Make sure you're grounding through the thumb and then next finger mounds. With this action, try not to jack up your neck so we're still nice and soft. Okay, come forward into a plank. Steady yourself. Integrate. Feel where the breath travels now. And then lower your body down to the ground. Finding breath. We're going to interlace our hands behind our back for locust pose. If that's too much for you, you're going to have palms down at the floor. Um, next to your sides and then lift everything up. So your choice, whether you bind your hands or not, breathe well, feel your diaphragm, move your whole body. Neck is soft, keep the back of the neck long. Exhale and relax. Come up on tall fours. Move your spine around, maybe wag your tail, maybe circle, maybe cat cow, whatever feels good. we're going to sit back on our heels for a moment. If this is not comfortable, sit on a block for Virasana. If this is not comfortable, sit cross-legged on some support. So just find a seated posture that's, that makes you feel at ease. If you can sit in Virasana, try that um, because this can help just kind of flush the legs after the standing poses. All right, so <clears throat> begin to settle yourself again into this grounded place where we can focus on our breath. Notice the calm, hopefully the calmness of your mind, and the presence that your practice has given you, the awareness of your breathing, When we're ready, and take your time here and just regulate your slow down and regulate your breath for a few breaths. And I'll describe what we're going to do while you're just kind of gathering your ease. Okay. So instead of alternate nostril breathing, we're going to take our thumb and our ring finger on both sides of our nose, high on the tips of our nostrils. We're going to check in with making sure our shoulder, our elbow, our face, everything's relaxed. A little bit of a chin drop. A little bit of a chest lift, but not so much where you're pushing and you know, have this, this uh, guarding or gripping. We're going to breathe through both sides of our nose at the same time. And we're going to block off the nostrils 10%, 20%, 30%, no more than 50% shut. Both sides evenly. And you'll be able to regulate this. So if you kind of close a little bit with your fingers and then you're like, oh, that's a little too much, then open the pathway up a little bit more. Just kind of find what's just a sweet spot for you right now. Breathing through the nose, both on the inhale and the exhale. We're keeping those breath channels a little more narrow. Slow things down as best as you can. You don't want to feel short of breath. You want to have the pace being as slow and patient as you can be. Keep checking in with the ease of your face, your shoulder, your spine. might start noticing that where the breath kind of originates from or, or the effort of pulling the breath in or moving the breath back out, 
uh, ends up in a deeper place than just at your nose, your nostrils. Be very mindful to not start using those neck muscles to breathe. Keep the base of your skull relaxed and scalenes at ease. Even weight in your sit bones, feel your spine. your hand just pay attention to the beauty of a full deep breath in and out the cathedrals inside your sinuses these giant open chambers so much space Let's go ahead and come out of our seated posture. Come back up to dog pose. Notice when your head is upside down, the breath, see if you can still keep that beautiful long breathing. Walk your feet forward. Come into Utanasana. Halfway lift. Melt in the fold. Drop your seat, rising up, beautiful breathing. And exhale and come back down. Pigeon pose, right leg forward, left leg back. Choose any support that your body needs for this posture, including flipping over onto your back for a reverse pigeon pose if that's what your body needs. Expand open through your heart. So let's start with an upward posture. Stay in that beautiful breath that you've been cultivating. Support underneath your forehead if you want. So we're no longer binding the breath at all, but see if you can keep that ujjayi rhythm. Slow and steady, the breath is originating deeper back, not just at the front of your tips of your nose. And your exhales be patient and full. Neck is soft, we're not breathing with our neck. out of that side and find your way to the second side. <clears throat> Before you come down, rise up. So feel as you get yourself situated, the openness of the chest, the ease of the shoulder blades down the back. You can be on your back if that's a better posture for you. And whatever you're doing, as you come into the support that you have, uh, make sure your head is supported. So if you're on your back, rest the weight of your head on the floor. If you're in pigeon pose, stick a block underneath your head to keep your brain soft. So return to that ujjayi breath, a nice, slow, steady pace, both in and especially out. Out of the posture when you're ready, 
Stay in your breath. Try not to interrupt it too much. And we're going to come into heart bench or a rolled blanket heart uh, opener. So you choose. You can have a block and a block. So that there's one block in between your shoulder blades and another under the base of your skull for a restorative back bend. This is one choice. You can also roll a blanket okay, <clears throat> and kind of uh, find your way into a back bend over a rolled blanket. So whichever feels more appealing to you. No matter what you're choosing, our goal here is to stay with the beautiful breath that we have cultivated. So the breath, you want it to be slow and steady, nice and patient. Make sure the props underneath you are supporting an open heart, an open chest, and you're not in a place where there's um, strain. Okay. This is, restorative poses are supposed to be gentle. They're supportive for the body. They're not taking us into any extreme position. Whatever you're doing, see if you can maintain the beauty of the full breath without your neck having to do the work. The rib cage can expand completely and recoil completely. The diaphragm is functional and free. The neck, the base of the skull, the skull itself is all relaxed. Imagine that you know the feeling you had when you had you can even do it if you want of your finger pads along the edges of your trachea and kind of stripping down the lymph along your neck. See if you can ease your throat, ease your neck, ease the base of your skull. Allow your legs to soften, your arms to soften. yourself drifting, just drift with the breath and notice your fullness of breathing. Keep melting the shoulders, make sure you're comfortable. The weight of the head is dropping, the jaw and tongue are at ease. The sinuses have lots of room, your neck does not have to work. start to find our way out of this posture. We're going to roll over onto your side and pause for a moment <clears throat> on your side. Curl your spine a little bit. Let your ribs um, kind of soften and melt. And then 
we're going to take the props out of the way and come to lie down on your back. <coughs> Bring your knees into your chest and rock a little bit, swaying from left to right. And put your feet back down, lift your hips, scoot them over to the right knees, drop over to the left, twisting. Enjoy the, re the finding of a little bit different positioning of your spine after the back bend. Let your head turn and relax. on up, screw your hips over to the left, knees come up and drop them to the right. Big breaths here, melt what you can. And find your way into Shavasana. So remember that this is such an important pose. If there's anything you need to get comfortable, if you need a little happy baby or a little rocking or whatever support you need to take, take it. And then return to the ease of your breath. Let your limbs be comfortable. So do you like your legs and arms wide or close? Do your shoulder blades feel in a happy place? Is your, does your neck have room? Are you able to melt your skull and rest your jaw? Can you find those chambers of your sinuses again, breathing deeply into your nose? Can you feel that those chambers, the sinuses are just the antechambers and the real chambers are deep in your lungs? Imagine all this beautiful space in your lungs. Everything you need is here. The vitality can be received just the simple act of breathing. Give your body weight over to the earth.
Let's begin to deepen our breathing again. Enjoy the breath. Invite movement into the body. Eventually find your way <clears throat> coming to your side. Finding yourself coming up to sit as your body is ready. Find comfort in your seat for a moment. Enjoy your breath. When you're ready, bring your hands together at your heart. In this beautiful breath practice that serves us, provides us with vitality and support, presence and ease. Let's bring these energies to another. Send forth your energy to someone who needs this. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a beautiful breathing day.